Hey guys, this is Dunslanus here for HOSNG.com with my debut video. Today we're going to be looking at some matches. I'm playing against Pbogues, who's also a new HOSNG.com instructor. I believe his first video uh, went up during this past week at some point. And today I'm going to be playing, I think, three to four uh, matches against him at the 33 Turbos on Revolution, and we'll just be looking at uh, some interesting spots against him, you know, whatever comes up, and also just sort of a general approach to playing reg v reg games at the mid stakes. Uh, I know a lot of low stakes and mid stakes guys, you know, don't really put much stock in playing regs, and it makes sense because there is a fair amount of fish action lower, especially if you can play on stars or, or tilt. You know, for US players, sometimes action can be pretty bad, but it. I do think that there is. A lot of merit to working on your reg v reg game. Uh, not only do you, I find it, you know, pretty interesting and enjoyable to play regs, uh, much more interesting than a fish, although arguably less profitable. But it also just gets you really into the mindset of adjusting to what your opponents are doing, and of adjusting to, you know, more aggressive strategies that you tend to see in reg v reg games, um, and and just sort of thinking in a new exploitive mindset that is sort of different from the mindset that we have more playing uh, fish. Um, so Pbogues is uh, a reg on lock. He's played a lot of 33s, I believe some you know 55s, and uh, he mentioned in his first video that he played up to hundreds on Bovada, so he's certainly a competent mid-stakes reg. Um, to give a little background on myself, uh, I have been playing as Obsidian goes for uh, maybe two or three years now, uh, seriously, and let's see, before ba uh, Black Friday I was playing on, on Tilt, Turbos, 22s, up to 33s there, um, and then I moved to Stars and was playing Hypers, uh, uh, primarily uh, the 30 Hyper level and also a bit of play at the 60 Hyper level, um, and then Black Friday happened and a lot of, a lot of things changed, and uh, I've had some stints playing higher, but these days I am playing uh, pretty much most of that runs in the mid stakes levels. So whether that's you know 30 hypers, 36 hypers, 45 hypers, or 55 turbos, you know I I play I play what runs and hope to move up again in the future. But that's where I've been you know for the past year and change now, um, playing on all these networks. Um, so, I just wanted to record this before my matches against Pbogues, before going over those, because, as you can see, I have 133 hands against him, and just wanted to be uh, outlining some of my initial approach to playing him, given that we're not going into this completely readless, uh, going to note some key stats that we're going to be, you know, keeping an eye on, looking to take advantage of going into the match. Of course, we'll continue to adjust as we get more hands and uh, as some more dynamics um, start to emerge and things of that nature. Um, but for now, this is just sort of an, an initial approach given these reads, and we're just going to break them down very quickly. Uh, as you can see, his open percentage deep is uh, only 53% of hands, and in addition to this, he's limping about a quarter of hands and folding to most of the limp attacks. So this leads us to believe that he is limping mostly bottom of his range, uh, bottom of his play playable range from the button, and he's going to be opening a stronger range here. As you can see, it's a pretty narrow percentage, um, and with him limping the bottom of his range, this is sort of middling to good hands for the most part, and we expect him to be uh, and because of that, because we expect them to be uh, raising stronger from the buttons, we are going to tighten up our flatting range a little bit. So that's one adjustment we'll be making. Additionally, we will be attacking a ton of his limps um, with a lot of our hands just to get folds. So, you know, if he limps and we have do 3 off, we're going to be putting in a raise um, just to try and exploit that. Additionally, and this is sort of interesting, uh, over my 7 C bets at 17 BB or deeper, uh, over my 5 C bets, uh, deep stacked, he, er, 3 bets, sorry, he's been folding 100%, so, 
that is sort of interesting um, given and he's, he hasn't four bet me yet so that is sort of interesting given he he looks to be opening stronger it's something to keep an eye on a sort of tension between the stats and why you really want to be also focusing on you know game flow on dynamics um, and on situations as opposed to just sort of blindly reading off hub numbers um, so we are going to be keeping a close eye on that to see how that emerges. Uh, it is possible that he's just only playing, you know, 15% of hands or something to a 3-bet after uh, after opening, so he'll be folding most of the time, which, if that's the case, you know, we'll, we'll try and find that out and take advantage of it, but it's also a pretty small sample of 3-bets, um, so it's hard to draw too much from that, but it's certainly something to keep an eye on. Um, additionally, just one last point I want to bring up. As you can see, his C-bet here is only 53%. Um, that is a pretty low C-bet percentage for a reg, especially, you know, where we've played all these games. He's known I'm a reg. Um, I know he's a reg, so it seems pretty passive, but he's, in reality, he's checking back some made hands. I have, you know, some hands in my database where he checks back two pair and he checks back um, an interesting top pair of hand. I think he checked back ace-x on like ace-eight-six rainbow. Um, so that is going to sort of strengthen his check back range, maybe make our uh, turn probes less effective. Um, and so that's just another thing to keep an eye on, that he's not necessarily c-betting all of his strong hands, um, and he's just not c-betting that wide of a percentage. Um, so we'll talk about how to adjust to that when some spots come up in the video. Um, but those are just sort of some initial uh, impressions and approaches and how how I think we should be looking to um, sort of break down a reg that we've been playing playing a bit and that we're going to continue to play. Uh, just sort of going in, I think, doing a quick, you know, review of stats and of uh, any significant or noted hands that you have against them is just going to pay real dividends in the long run. Uh, so that's all for this sort of introduction. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and uh, I will continue this. All right, guys. So we are going to look at some. All right, guys. So we are going to look at some matches played against P Bugs, uh, keeping in mind our reads as discussed in my a uh, little bit right before this. And, you know, using that as a baseline to sort of work off of, but of course we are going to keep looking to adjust. Um, so we played, I think, six or seven matches. Um, I think there were quite a few interesting spots. Um, we did run a bit good in flips, and <laughs> so hopefully we'll just sort of take a look and get some interesting, uh, you know, commentary and ideas going about these spots. Uh, I believe he was starting his recording here, so it takes some seconds for him to make his first action. Um, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> it's a bit of dead air time, but unfortunately, but he gets it worked out in a few seconds. And yeah, so here we go now. Now hopefully it's all fine. Um, so as I mentioned, min raising is my standard. Uh, I just don't see the need to build pots too much. Um, you know we're deep. We have no problem getting uh, bets in. So uh, when we're in position deep, and we can use our bet sizing to build pots and and such. Um, so here we flat his three bet, which is pretty standard. Um, I like to call his lead, which I think is fine. I think when we raise, we fold out too many of his hands that don't really have uh, equity and might might continue to barrel. Um, and I like to check back for some purpose of deception here. Um, when he checks the turn, I would believe that his range is relatively weak, um, has a fair amount of air balls that he decides to give up with and buff catching hands that uh, probably aren't calling three barrels on this king high board in the three bet pot so we just check it back um, 
and elect to fire a relatively large bet on this river to get value from his bluff catchers, and he snaps with ace queen, and we win a pretty decent sized pot right off the bat. Here, obviously, you know, pretty standard min raise. Um, 7 3 suited. This is a hand right off the bat. I want to establish an aggressive dynamic. Uh, it, this is a bit of like a more of a hyper turbo concept, but it's a decent hand to 3 bet bluff. It's uh, suited um, as opposed to being some offsuit hand. It's in our folding range, so we're not like wasting a hand we could flat. And we're trying to establish some aggression and take uh, take advantage of his high fold to 3 bet percent thus far and sort of see how that develops as mentioned before so you just do that um, and get a fold so here I do like to float one um, we have some overs and he's not really going to be double barreling this that much. I don't think uh, he'll be trying to take a fair amount of hands to show down and just giving up after we call, after we flat because it looks pretty strong so we should be able to get to show down relatively easily there. Um, and when we improve we're uh, likely best. Again here this is a hand that we could check back but I am looking to sort of exploit his weak limping range and the benefits for attacking his limp with a hand like that. Um, when he flats we can rep an ace or a king really well but also on the middling boards we actually spike those so we'll have real value and uh, when we hit like a middling board and perceived value when um, when like an ace high board comes and now I start mucking around with my PT4 for a little bit which is basically me being an idiot and this goes on for a couple minutes but Uh, so here we could have stabbed turn, but I just like to give up. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's pretty debatable. Um, so this is a standard call. This board is freaking awful for us. Uh, with the one club and just overs, and I don't really want to be floating too light and three bet pots as opposed to just you know single raise pots pre um we can. Uh, so here with a suited jack is you know too weak to really flat comfortably to a three X, but it's uh, again another hand uh sort of in the bottom of that range where we can just be uh three betting it. Because it is suited which is you know great. Uh this will happen a lot where we flop you know flush draws and stuff and are very comfortable stacking off. And that's what we do here with our over and flush draw. Um, it's pretty interesting that he flatted queens to our three bet. Uh, typically, you'll see aces and kings do that sometimes. Um, but an ace or a king flop, I think, some 40% of the time with pocket queens, and that's just not that fun of a spot. So I was a bit surprised to see that. But nonetheless, he did flat. We got it in. Uh, with less outs than we expected, but we managed to catch. So that is game one. <laughs> I mean, yeah, stacking off is pretty clearly fine there. Uh, even against over pairs, we'll have eight to nine outs. Uh, my jack is live a fair percentage of the time, and. Uh, we'll just get folds by c betting. So when he jams, we more more than have the pot odds to just stick it in there. So not a very tough decision. Yeah, I think he you know, pauses his recordings or something in between every game. Um, so here, queen three is sort of the bottom of 
of my flying range, which I have been, you know, messing around with quite a bit lately. It's not like I have such a set strategy here myself, but uh, I think a queen will be good enough to fly it. We could consider three betting it, but uh, I would prefer a suited hand, um, just because it makes our lives a lot easier. Um, we'll flop equity more of the time, etc. Uh, again, sort of a bad board to see bet. Um, I've sort of been discussing other spots uh, as opposed to see bet spots in this video, but there have been a lot of middling connected boards on our buttons so far, and those are just sort of bad for us against this flying range. Uh, so here we check back. We uh, we delayed see bet turn when we hit top pair, and this river is not that. Uh, fun of a spot after he check raises turn. And I like to make sort of a nitty fold because I feel like he has a fair amount of draws played that way. Um, and I go back to mocking with my PT4 for a second. Um, so that was pretty tight, but his line is very strong, and I haven't seen him uh, check raise boards and get and barrel sh uh, rivers light in our history so I just decided to give that a lot of respect and just hold yeah sorry about this <laughs> I'm trying to get the notes pane up actually without realizing that the notes pane is already up quite yet I do catch on to that soon <laughs> Yeah, okay, so now I have it up. Um, maybe I should. Uh, I don't know if that works. So I uh, do finally get my notes up here, <laughs> and now uh, you can see what I was mocking about in PC4 for so long for, because uh, I do have some you know, particular spot notes um, from some of our previous games. So, yeah, sorry if there's a slight jump in the video there, um, but now we will resume. Uh, so, I like to float. Um, just don't expect them to have us beat too often. And we have ace high, so we're trying to get the showdown. Uh, here he overbets river, which is pretty weird. I would expect him to bet turn with most of his value. Um, and we did river our ace, and we chop with every ace except the. Uh, Ace King or some sort of ace that is stronger, like a two pair sort of ace. Um, but I would expect most of his sixes to barrel that turn, uh, or his queens to barrel that turn. So we do just call his over bet, which is uh, he shows us basically the nuts, <laughs> so <laughs> we're no good. But I think it's fine. So yeah, here King three suited just doesn't play well enough uh, post flop. He hasn't three bet much this session, um, so we are just folding two a three bet right now. Uh, in this video, I do think I open a bit too wide occasionally, and this is one of those spots where I think I might prefer a fold pre. Uh, he's playing a decent amount out of position, not folding that many c-bets, uh, three-betting some, so I, mean, I think it's a bit too loose. Um, 
obviously not, you know, a huge mistake to play really any two cards in position, but I think it is a small one there. Uh, so here we elect to 3-bet for value, uh, given the levels just changed, we're like 22 BB deep, so we're just 3-bet going with our King Jack and T4-bets, which is no fun, but um, I'm pretty confident it's a value 3-bet. Even though he is not opening uh, particularly wide over this sample, um, hold on here. <clears throat> okay, there we go. So as I was saying, even though he was not uh, three betting or opening that wide over this sample, so you can make a pretty con convincing argument to flat uh, King Jack there. Uh, we've talked, you know, some strat, um, or just over a few hands, and just given that, and given that he's, you know, another reg, and we don't have that many hands, um, when we start to get shallower, I would just expect him to be wider than his HUD stats, uh, would reflect currently. Um, and then it's a pretty standard value 3 bet, especially considering that was his first 4 bet and he had not 4-bet me at all when I had 3-bet him deeper, so we don't expect, we expect him to flat a lot, and we just play pretty well when he flats, so I like value 3-betting there. Um, here again, I expect our flat to look relatively strong, and I want to take the A side to showdown. I expect him to be C-betting pretty wide on these paired boards, so it's a pretty big trend, thanks, and in big part to a lot of hyper guys uh, where you know C betting paired boards all the time is is just being done uh, regs are doing it as standard which is good because it's hard for opponents to hit but we can uh, sort of counter that by floating some especially when someone like P-Bogus isn't uh, firing two barrels very often and he's more of a one and done type guy uh, for the most part. So we're just trying to take that to showdown. Uh, here, again, you could make an argument for checking back, but I want to be punishing his limps, and King 4 off doesn't play that great post, so we elect to do that, and we get a fold. Here, queen six, uh, sort of near the bottom of our flatting range to his three x's. Um, it's still a pretty clear flat. Uh, I think queen five also flat. Queen three, queen four are sort of closer. And we like to make a play. Uh, we've been playing pretty tight so far out of position in the video. Um, we haven't three bet him much. We haven't check raised any flops. And it's just a flop that he's not going to be hitting that much. Of course, there's the king, but he also raises you know, aces, tons of middling hands, um, so I do like to just make a play uh, on that board, and he gives it a lot of respect, um, or I think he would be inclined to give it a lot of respect, basically, no matter what we had, just given the game flow up to this point. Um, so also, later now, we can maybe consider doing that with value. And uh, maybe he'll perceive us as being wider, so we can, you know, profit more by getting lighter calls. So here again, we're uh, limit tagging for much the same reason as the, I guess, ten uh, eight hand earlier or something like that, where we can rep a side boards and we can. Um, we also just get value when middling uh, hands sort of come on board, because uh, we hit those boards, obviously. Um, so he limp raises. We're not folding to his size of a limp raise. Really, we're deep enough where this is just a call. Um, he has a lot of pretty strong hands, a lot of pretty strong ace uh king X type stuff, but we play pretty well against that. Um, you know, well enough to justify a flat, 
uncertain. And when he fires uh, this flop, you know, he does hit the king sometimes. Um, but we have been punishing his limps, so he might be limp raising somewhat light. And also, you know, he still misses this board far more than he hits it, I think. So we just flat. Um, because if we jam, certainly we'll fold out worse, but we're only getting snapped by stronger tens, like premium pockets, they decided to trap and kings. We're not really folding out anything that's great for us to fold out. Um, so we just flat decide to evaluate turns and rivers. Um, and here we turn to pair and we let him continue being the aggressor. Um, and here I like to just stick it in because I don't want any cards to come on the river that just kill our action, like 9, Queen, possibly Ace. Um, and we're obviously way ahead of his range, so we just shove for value and we get snapped by worse. Um, so running a bit bad there for him, but it's always nice <laughs> to turn the nuts and get paid off. And I think it was pretty standard uh, on both of our parts. I mean, I don't know if I really love the limp trap with the, uh, with the ace king, but we had been punishing some of his limps uh, most of the time when he had limped. So I would pr I'd probably prefer to do that with like a premium pocket where we're just guaranteed to have equity and to have an easy time post flop. Um, but it is understandable because you know he crushes everything that we limp trap with, and he can just or attack his limps with, and he can just raise, and it's not bad really. Just given how much we had been attacking his limps up to this point, um. So we do note that um that he is limp trapping in response. Sorry, doing some resizing. Alright, so here we just flat. Uh, don't really love 3 bidding Queen Jack off, just because when we get called, we're, you know, we don't play that well. Um, and when we get 4 bet, we're always behind, and um, it just flats really well, so pretty standard flat. Um, he C bets, and I like to uh, check raise because this is a relatively wet board. We've flopped a really strong hand. Um, so I'm fine uh, building a pot here. And he he could very well, you know, put us on a draw. Because uh, I do play, you know, draws like that quite a high percentage of the time. So that uh, it's good to have some just pure value check raises, like made hands there. Um, but he just folds, so not not a huge uh, spot there. Uh, here, this can be sort of thin because the king is good for his range, but I expect him to be checking back a lot of uh, aces, really, because we uh, and probably a lot of other um, just overhands, like hand, uh, hands with one over and things, because we had been. You know, floating him pretty wide, so uh, the value of just betting betting there really goes down for him when we're playing that way. Um, just because we'll be floating, and he's clearly hasn't been comfortable to this point firing multiple barrels in these spots. Um, so there we double barrel turn because we picked up a lot of equity, and uh, it will just give us a chance to fire a lot of rivers. He obviously calls flop with uh, any pair, like possibly draws, floats, um, so we just fold all that out, which is great. And here I do consider four betting. Do I? Yeah. All right, looking at this now, I don't really know if I love it that much. Um, I think this hand is sort of a mistake. 
just because he hasn't 3 bet us that much in a while, his 3 bet percentage isn't that high. <laughs> but anyway, I do like to 4 bet, and it's not a terrible hand for it. Um, because again, we do have the suited equity. We haven't 4 bet yet, so we can rep really strong um, on a lot of boards. You know, we can rep over pairs, we can rep the ace, which we wound up doing in that spot. Um, and I had, I had 4 bet him a couple times in the past, and he had just folded. So, I don't know, I liked it to make a play there. I don't know if I love it, but I don't think it's terrible, really. Uh, when we're flattered, we do play okay. Because um, I would expect him to jam, you know, most of his pocket pairs and things. Uh, jam most of his pocket pairs and things over our 4 bet just because we're repping such extreme strength, so we're probably not going to be 4 bet folding very much. Um, and it's sort of different when we 3 bet and he flats because we're 3 betting a pretty wide range, but I've only 4 bet him, I think, three times. That was my third time, lifetime, and, uh, you know, in, in some 50 button opens or something by him, so. Or, sorry, in some 80 hands out of position. Um, and like 15 or 23 bets by him, so. Uh, so here we just call one, um, and this turn completes club jaws isn't over just sort of helps his range and we have bottom pair so we're just giving up on the turn also his uh, double barrel percentage is very low so we're inclined to give that a lot of respect um, So here, pretty standard flat. Um, I don't really like 3-betting these weak aces when his open percentage is pretty low. And I know he has folded to a lot of 3-bets. Um, but, but this is another sort of uh, meta spot why I check raise as opposed to check calling. Um, just because of some conversations we've had where uh, he told me he was expecting me to 3-bet most of my ace in these spots. So I figured I would look sort of bullshit to him uh, if he was still holding that assumption and check raising. I think uh, check calling there is pretty fine. Although he doesn't double barrel uh, very much, so that is sort of an argument for um, check raising just to try and get value and get the initiative. But I think pretty pretty standard in other you know with other more standard rig v rig dynamics is just going to be check calling in that spot a lot of the time um, because you'll get a lot of barrels off after not 3-betting pre and just check calling flop um, there's a lot of reggae villains will perceive that you know you haven't or that you don't have very much ASX at all in your range there which really you don't um, for the most part so last hand we decided to attack his limp again and he limp raised um, so he's showing more of a tendency to be limp trapping some strong hands now and here I decide to turn my uh, deuce into a bluff. I think he can call flop with a lot of draws, uh, sixes, other twos, and this turn card is really bad for his range. Um, we'll just fold out a lot of hands that you know have equity. And if he bets river, like if we check back and he bets river, it's just not going to be easy for us to call there and get to showdown. Um, There are some pretty standard spots here. Just pre flop stuff. So, King Deuce is a hand where we could 3 bet. I would prefer King Deuce suited to 3 bet. Um, 
But I do like the flat. And we flop, you know, bottom pair and the not flush draw. So we're going to be check raising and getting it in. Because uh, really, no matter what he stacks off with there, we're doing fine. And he should be folding a lot of any deuces, threes, any um, any just two overhands that you know if the turn breaks and he barrels again, um, put us in sort of a bad spot, especially in uh on river or in river situations as well. Uh, so here we don't attack his limp and we just call his flop at, and we checks back turn. I don't know. Uh, he's clearly just giving up with the hand so when the when we hit our flush on the river there's just no value in, in betting um, I would expect him to bet turns with anything that could like consider calling that we beat um, so here he three bets which he hadn't hasn't done much lately but King Dun is obviously going to be a standard flat at 30 deep to uh, his three bet and when we flop uh, middle pair, and he continues, as you can see, uh, might be a little blurry, I'm sorry for that, but his uh, c-bet after 3-betting is 80% uh, at this point, um, over a relatively decent sample, so we expect him to be c-betting really his entire range, and there isn't that, uh, that much of it that really hits, um, hits the queen, I mean... Um, ace queen certainly, king queen, which we have a block or two. Um, I wouldn't really expect him to be three betting queen jack or queen ten or that sort of thing uh, too often. So, but he does have a lot of draws. Uh, you know, heart draws or just you know hands uh, with jack. You know, jack eight, jack nine, king jack. He could be three betting sometimes. Um. Or just bluffs that um, that are really put in a bad spot when we jam, um, and we just get it in ahead a lot. So I do jam with uh, King Ten, and I remember this spot being sort of weird because he just snaps and he has Queen Three, which I didn't really consider him to be through by bluffing that much. Um, but he did obviously three bet bluff a suited queen, which I think is pretty uh pretty fine. Um, and he just happens to have it. But he's also calling off there with you know uh, draws, hard draws, or straight draws, and a ton of worse tens. Probably any pair. Um, so I think it's fine to just stick it in there. And there again was sort of loose open after uh, losing a big pot, so you might be prone to think that we're tilting a bit, um, which we're not. But yeah, he doesn't know that. Here, I don't really know if I like this seabed either. Um, just because anything, uh, although he doesn't raise that wide, he's probably not folding that much, and um, just given you know any two high card hands have a lot of uh, equity, they either have a pair or like some draws or something. There's also the hard draws out there, um, and we have showdown value with our deuces, so we're just basically turning that into a bluff on a pair board, which is not great. Uh, so here we flop the open industry flush draw is pretty standard flat out of position. Uh, some people could argue for three betting it, but against his open percentages, I don't really like that. Um, it's because when we get shallower, he's not opening very wide at all. So we do like to just check raise, and we're obviously stacking off with our open ended straight flush draw. Um, but if he folds.
So yeah, this is a pretty standard. Uh, I'm a hyper guide heart really. This is a pretty standard uh, three vet bluff hand. We hadn't three vet him in uh, quite a while, so I did elect to three vet bluff there, thinking we get some respect. Um, and it's just something we don't want to be three betting pure value even against his uh, tight range because he'll catch on to that uh, if we do get the showdowns. And here I sort of tank about this. Again, if if this were like a fewer three betting wider, if you were like a hyper reg, this would just be a snap because it could be three betting, you know, suited connectors and things of that nature would be fine. Um in addition to ASX and pairs. I do wind up calling here, which I, I think is sort of loose. Um against me it certainly would be correct to three bet jam quite wide in this spot, but I'm not actually convinced that he knows this looking at this hand again. Uh, but I I just gave him credit. As you can see, my PFR in this game is 95%, and uh, in our previous game, I had also been opening pretty wide. So I gave him credit to realize that he could just be jamming uh, a fair amount of hands. I don't know. That that's probably not best uh, looking back at the hand, but I did wind up calling and winning a flip. Um, let's see here at six. Uh, this king three calls obviously. Pretty standard. I'm just going to be gnashing at uh, 7 or 8 BB, and then above that, we're going to be playing a different strategy. Involving maybe some lamps and some min race calling. Um, and some min race folding. But, you know, at 6 or 7, I just don't really think we can be doing much better. So here I check back. Uh, maybe I should pause this and go back a little bit. So he sees us as flop, and I like to just check call um, because I do expect him to be barreling a fair amount of turns. Uh, this turn is an under, which is you know a pretty bad barreling card. Really, we've shown we have at least some sort of equity that this turn really hits. Um, so I could have considered leading here. But I just checked to him, and on this river we fill the bum end of the straight, and um, I checked to him to give him the chance to wrap something. Uh, it doesn't make that much sense for us to just call the flop with a five or a lone ten. It would have to be you know one of those cards with more equity. So I give him a chance to barrel because I think he could you know easily be bluffing or turning some sort of hand into a bluff. Um, I know a weak eight. Possibly, um, obviously not something too strong because that's just trying to get to showdown. But I I do think he can he can bluff with a lot of uh, hands and just rep the straight and we could just call. Um, whereas if we bet, I don't really expect him to be bluff jamming that much just because betting on a four straight river looks really strong by us. Um, but he does wind up checking back and showing a seven, so. Which he opted not to turn into a bluff. Uh, so we in the pot. So here again, a little loose, but he hasn't been three betting me that much. Um, and this is sort of a weird spot. Where I ultimately do wind up calling just because I don't expect them to be flatting many, me, really anything that uh, hits his Paris here. Um, he winds up having flatted the nuts pre, and I spike, um, which is great. As I said, I, I do run pretty good in this video. But just circling at the spot. Um, I did consider folding. I was just expecting to be jamming most of his pocket pairs, you know, sevens through jacks at least, really, um, or sixes through jacks at least. Um, and I would expect him to be jamming, you know, ace five, ace three, ace four, uh, ace deuce, probably any like suited king, queen. Um, King three, king four, that sort of hand. Not really flatting any threes, fours, or fives at 
10 BB deep. Um, so when he jams, uh, you know, it's not like we hit this board that much either, so I expect him to just be bluffing a fair percentage of the time, so we just call. Uh, but he wound up having the nuts there.